Oh, well, good afternoon, everybody. Um, today is the uh, 8th of March, uh, 2018, and uh, I'll try and be brief, but this subject, of course, is uh, so deep and uh, complicated that you can't cover it in five minutes. Uh, I um, should basically outline that uh, when I was young, I was considered to be um, agnostic. Uh, my mother described it, me as agnostic before I even knew what the word meant. And uh, I didn't know whether God existed or, or didn't or anything like that. And uh, I'm addressing this to my non-Christian and my Christian friends. I'm hoping that you'll stick with it for till it's concluded, in other words, to make your own mind up what, about what I'm saying. And many years later, I became a Christian as an adult, actually, oh, about 20-odd years ago. Now, then, just in recent months, let's say, I quite recently, actually, uh, came across a book called Christians and Evolution. And I bought that at a Kurong bookshop in Brisbane. And I was astounded by uh, what it had to say. In other words, it was 18... Christians, uh, many were, we call them um, evangelical Christians, uh, uh, there might have been a couple of Catholics and might have been a few other faiths, you know, churches or whatever mixed in there with that. And it was, uh, it was edited um, by a professor and all these people who contributed retained their Christian faith despite the fact that they realised after going to university and they became one of them was a, was a marine biologist. He wanted to be that since he was a kid. Others became physicists. And all sorts of uh, very highly trained people were involved in this uh, book. It's worth getting hold of, by the way. It costs about $17 at the Kurong Bookshop. Now, that's for a particular my Christian friends can read it. I loaned it to uh, our uh, relative and friend Paul Murphy, and he can have a look at it, no doubt. More than look at it, I urge him to read it from cover to cover. And you would say, well, why, why do that? Well, the thing is, I was convinced by reading it that uh, although the book doesn't say God created uh, evolution, I believe he did. It's an, it's an ideal and a perfect answer to the situation because uh, even uh, people who believe in the Big Bang, which I, I believe existed, and who believe in evolution, which I now do believe is correct. Some of those people, and I won't name them, but they say, oh no, well, see, there's no, look, Johnny, there's no God. Uh, it's all evolution, it all happened by accident, but it's too perfect. And there was, um, I can't find his name, I can't remember his name, but I think Miku is something, it's a Japanese American that uh, said he believes that there's God. But he, he says, I can believe that there's, Mathematically, I can prove that there is a God. But, as he says, I don't believe in the God of uh, Moses and Jacob and therefore Jesus, which sounds confusing to some of you. But I believe there's a, there's a God who created, in other words, this boundless amount of life throughout the universe. Uh, and when you consider that there's a trillion stars in our galaxy alone, <laughs> Do the quick mathematics, and I'm pretty poor on that sort of thing, but if you did 1% had, had planets that were habitable around them, and 1% of those actually had developed intelligent life on them, you've got over a million planets in this galaxy alone that would have intelligent life on them. So the place is filled with life. Now, there is somebody, uh, they, and this was mentioned in the book, and I can't for the life of me right now find the name of the person who said this, but it was a Christian... I say a scholar, a person who worked out that the world was only about 6,000 odd years old by genealogy. Now, that equation might have suited people for the last 1,800 years or so. But since then, they've grown up quick, more quickly than that. They've examined the facts in, in, and they've looked into science and, and they've looked at things that shake you up in that sense that uh, it is said that 
the centre of our own galaxy is 150,000 light years away. Now think about that for a while, just contemplate that for a moment. It takes light 150,000 years to go from the centre to where we are, and we're about three quarters of the way out along it. Uh, the arm of a spiral galaxy. We're only just a pretty ordinary planet, but a nice planet, a uh, ideal planet for life, obviously, that's what we're here for. But for a Bible or anything else to tell you, that the, or indicate to people, uh, if, um, amongst you would be fundamentalists who would poo-hoo all this, but, oh, don't worry, you know, uh, God, God created the earth and then, then he, he created the stars and he hung them all up, and there they are to guide your ship by the, by night and all the rest of it. Oh, uh, and uh, and six days it was all done. Now some people would say, "Oh, God can do what He likes in six days." Yes, He could. Yeah, I, I can concede that is true. But to indicate that by in what is said in Genesis that as if the Earth was the beginning and effectively the centre of the universe with all the stars and the, and the moon made later, later days, or the, or the next day or something, let's say, or even later the same day, oh, we make the sun, give us some light, let there be light, and there was. We'll give you your moon, we'll put all that there, pop, 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 put it all out like that, magic, you see? Oh, that suits a lot of people, that was good. That, that worked, as I said, for about 1800 years. Won't work anymore. But now, the Bible is full of of this uh, of parables. This is the best word I can use for Christians and anyone else who would understand the term parable. The Bible is filled with it. Uh, and they're good lessons for life and how to live your life and so forth. Now I accept that. Uh, and I remain a Christian after reading the book that I'm telling you about. And I do urge you to get that book. And as I said, I can't think for the moment what is the name of this guy. He's a Japanese-American. He, he invented the string theory, they call it. Like the, the idea of wormholes, by the way, and that leads me on to another aspect of this. That alien races have been around for billions of years longer than we have. Now, it's very interesting that you look at scientists like Stanton Friedman, who's a, 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 a physicist, tells us that, it's over, that the universe is over 13 billion years old and that our neck of the woods, our group of galaxies that we live in, is only four and a half billion years old. So it's all being formed in a big bang, so to speak, which is true. And it's spreading and it's continuing to spread out and out and out. We don't know of an ending to it, in other words. So you've got to ask yourself, are scientists right when they calculate that galaxies are so many billion years, light years away? Are they wrong? Now, as was just pointed out, I've got my computer on and it talks about the size and age of the universe and it gives all the scientific, but lame, in layman speak in a sense, plain language, why the universe is old and not new and not young. Because for Light travels at a constant speed. Some people say it doesn't. Oh, well, it might vary. I can't understand how it does, but 186,000 miles a second, like that's what we taught when we were kids. And you need light to see anything. Now, you can have night goggles and you can magnify the light hundreds of times and you can see with night goggles, but you need some light, a little bit of light, to see something. So the light from distant galaxies which is calculated to be thousands of light years, millions of light years away, billions in fact if you want to come down to it, over 8 billion, that's as far as we can see, 13 billion I should say, not 8, that means the light's been travelling for that amount of time for us to see it. And we are, believe it or not, only a young creation, four and a half billion years. So we've got to this stage now where we're getting doing space exploration or we're getting uh, some wonderful scientific advances in recent years. And there could be lots of arguments there about uh, whether we went to the moon or didn't go to the moon or what's going on. I'm not, not going to uh, what's the word cloud all this up by saying uh, going into you know 
conspiracy theories and all that sort of thing. I won't. Although I accept many interesting things that have been raised in more recent times, but I won't go into that now. But I just say that anyone who believes that the Earth is only 6,000 years old and therefore, and it was the virtual foundation of the universe, there's God, there's heaven, in other words, there's the Earth, and he, his people, he communicates with his people, and his people have faith with him, and those who die may go to heaven or they may go to hell, and all that sort of thing. I can see why there are certain friends of mine, for example, uh, I'll name John Edwards as one of them, and he, but he said one time to me that he's not just narrow-minded, he's actually closed-minded when it comes to this. In other words, he believes, he's a fundamentalist, and he believes that Earth is only 6,000 years old, creation itself is only 6,000 years old, and everything in the universe is therefore 6,000 years old. Well, I've just got to say, uh, if you believe in that, you've got to start examining your faith system. And I'll put it to you that if you look up a variety of things, uh, uh, if you're interested in, in uh, Christianity, look, look up Lee Strobel and the case for Christ, and I accept that. If you're interested in aliens, look up Stanton Friedman and call, slaying the dragon, put that term in. Anyway, I've got the phone ringing in the background, so I guess I'll go and have to answer that. So I'll leave you with it for now, so thanks for viewing.